Hey guys, so I'm here to review the 241st uh, chapter slash shift of Metamorphosis to Malleability. And uh, in this chapter, it is subtitled Explosive Revelations. Long story short, we basically leave off where basically Briella found the drone that was heading towards Duncan's office and basically finding out that it's essentially a bomb. And so what does she do? Well, knowing it's about to go off after she's kind of dismantled it, she essentially decides to go and use some cartoon logic by expanding her mass over it, hardening herself like a rock, and letting it blow up in her like, you know, she's somebody that, um, you know, in a cartoon, if you will, you know, ate a bomb and it just went boom. You know, think... I think the uh, ending scene, the climactic scene, if you've seen the episode of New Partners on the Block from Disney's Bonkers, where he basically eats the bomb, swallows it, and it explodes in him, and then he burps afterwards. So, so yeah, basically something like that. Now, of course, this does get Duncan and Greta's attention. And Briella does reappear sort of in a tendril like tendril uh, like form before you know just I guess splatting on the floor and kind of relaxing for a bit before she pulls herself together. Thus the exploding or the explosiveness, if you will, proving that she is exactly more than what she is with these powers, if you will. She is more than what she is with these powers. Now, um, with that said, with that said, basically, um, you know, Duncan and Greta are grateful that Briella found the, this device before it went off. They're grateful for that. They are very grateful and Duncan wants to know exactly, you know, who may have designed it. He wants the truth. You know, he wants some kind of answers to, as to who sent it after them. Because she does, Briella does show Duncan and Greta the head of the device. You know, the head of the bug device, if you will. And, you know, she wants to know, okay, well not she, but he wants to know exactly who sent it to them, if you will, who, who sent it their way. And basically, you know, I guess fully, fully recovering from the, the event, fully recovering from the event, if you will, um, basically she describes to them, or shows and describes to them uh, what the form looks like and Duncan basically mentions not only does it look very familiar but the person behind it has definitely gotten better but with disturbing results and of course this you know mentioning of he gets Briella's attention she reforms basically in a suitable like fashion glasses and all and she wants to know well who are you talking about and he brings up, Duncan that is, brings up a few screens. He brings up a few screens, if you will. And shows two individuals, two older people. One by the name of Tar Now, that's the last name. Or with the last names, I should say, of Tar Now, Tar Now. And Hollander. Hollander being the female um, person, you know, that's a suspect. And basically, Tarnow and Hollander, you know, are both described as senior researchers. And that both, mostly Hollander, may have had, if not did have, involvement in the doctor's, um, you know, escapades, if you will, in getting the knowledge he needed for, uh, you, know, you know, for the formula that he basically used to uh, try to replicate 
Gabriella's uh, powers, if you will. Anyway, anyway, both him, both Duncan and Greta point out that you know they these two are the prime suspects. That these two are the prime suspects in everything happening, even preventing them from trying to fully um, close out this investigation. You know, once and for all, basically, you know, the, basically they believe these two are behind, you know, everything that's happening. You know, you know, that's basically, you know, cutting them off from trying to uh, not only bring them to justice, but also try to start a new for Surrey Genesis, the, the facility that they're at. Anyway, long story short. Long story short, as they describe them, or show them, show who they are to Briella, and describe who they are and what they're about and why they're their prime suspects. Uh, Greta mentions that, you know, Tanao is a very sneaky one, but also doesn't understand how he's able to prevent them from doing everything they can to, you know, get, make a breakthrough to get this case done, this investigation done. Because he's not trained in espionage, but it does seem like, you know, he has, you know, the techniques. Like, even though he was never trained in, you know, in espionage, spied him, spied him, if you will, that he seems to have all the traits associated with it. So, basically, that does lead to the fact that there could be a third party involved in all of this. Because, again, Tarnow, according to Greta, shouldn't, you know, have, you know, the abilities, you know, to do what he's done on almost a you know very spy like level so long so basically in closing Briella focuses on Tarnow because apparently Hollander uh, according to Greta in the story and Duncan in the story according to both of them Hollander is just being used as a fall girl like a fall guy basically someone that's being set up to take the blame for everything while he gets off scot-free so she, they, they basically suspect Hollander is being put into that position, whether she's being put in that position willingly or not, we don't know yet, but it does seem like maybe, you know, the option A of willingly might be the direction they go in. So, basically the story ends with Briella focusing her glasses or her makeshift glasses, we will, her bifocals. Um, onto Tarnow's face, you know, burning it into her memory, and then that's how the story ends. Now, we don't know why she focused on only Tarnow and not Hollander. Could it be that maybe Tarnow seems very familiar to her? Like maybe she, he reminds her of somebody? Like maybe, let's say, a certain BFF's uh, fiance or something? We don't know. We don't know if that's the case or not, but she is primarily focused on him uh, instead of Hollander. So what happens next, you might ask? Well, she'll probably go back home and meet up with Crystal and everything. Basically meet up with Crystal, kind of act like nothing's really happened. You know, try to keep, you know, all the secrets away from her just for the time being. And I think the next couple of chapters, especially going into thanks, going into the Christmas season now, will focus on the fur convention, and we'll probably get before the year's over one last NFSW moment or NFSW erotic moment between the two. Um, before, like I said, before the year's over, and before we really amp things up going into 2023, as we head into the 200, 250th. Uh, edition, which apparently now will be taking place a week after Valentine's Day, because it would have made sense to happen around that time, but I think maybe she wanted to avoid it because it would be too obvious, so just save it for maybe the week after, or maybe even the spring, we shall see. But we do know that the uh, 250th edition will be around the third Thursday in February. And I still stick by what I believe. I still stick by the fact that I think Crystal somehow will get these powers too, I just got that feeling. How it happens, I do not know, but I do know that when it happens and the story does conclude, 
expect some very mandible, erotically NFSW uh, moments in the finale. Expect that, especially if it's on the honeymoon. Because you know, you know, Michelle, aka Dizzy Arts, is gonna want to, you know, write that up. Um, but also, but also, I do believe that Tarnell might be a certain uh, Vincent or Victor, whatever his name is, fiance of her BFF, her BFF Ilania, Ilania, yeah, Ilania, if you will. So that I believe is going to be a revelation, or at least there's going to be some kind of connection. I really do. And that's all I can really say. Hey, for right now, I do know we're going to get a Christmas, you know, one shot, you know, hopefully. But I do know that the next story arc, filler arc in, in any way, will be the fur convention one. You know, I do believe it's going to be the fur convention one. So, let me know what your thoughts are, guys, on this latest shift chapter of Metamorphosized to Malleability, the 241st edition, subtitled Explosive Revelations. What are your thoughts overall? Comment down below, live chat during the premiere, like the video, hit the subscribe and bell buttons for notifications as to when new content will arrive. Also, check me out at BW Roses Discussions, all your favorite audio podcast locations except for Pandora, where you will get an audio podcast version of this there as well. Also, check me out at my Teespring store, support me there just in time for the holiday season, get merchandise you can't get anywhere else. Also, check me out at BW Roses at patreon.com. Um, for the $1, $3 tier, also check me out at Venmo, support me there at barring warmer 2 and at Cash App at BW Roses 98 Also, check out, also, excuse me there, check out the DeviantArt page at DeviantArt.com, so that's BVW1979, and at Vimo at BW Roses. But yeah, guys, let me know what your thoughts are overall, and until then, in, um, I will talk to you all next time.